work. Look forward to working with you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Senator Romney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Young, you said a moment ago that the 2017 tax cut didn't do what it claimed it would do. I would note that prior to COVID, I believe the economy was at a record level of uh, growth and, uh, and low, record levels of low unemployment for uh, minorities and for uh, the entire population. So I, I would think, I wasn't here in 2017, didn't vote for that tax plan, but I think those who did would say actually it was doing what it said it would do. COVID came. And I don't believe the tax cut was related to COVID. Do you, do you um, of course, recognize that every country, uh, every major developed country in the world uh, has a capital gains rate, tax rate, lower than ordinary income rate? And, and the reason they do that, I presume, is because they, they want to encourage uh, individuals and entities to make risky investments because starting a business, for instance, is a risky thing to do or investing in basic research is a risky thing to do. And so rather than having people just put their money in the bank and earning interest, they want them to do things that, that if you will, create new businesses and, and new jobs. Uh, the, the president's plan uh, suggests that we're not going to have a lower tax rate for capital gains. Do, do you believe there's a relationship between growth and capital gains tax rates? Uh, Senator Romney, clearly we, we have a, a, maybe a difference of opinion on, on capital gains. We are trying to ensure that what you pay based on your labor, your work, um, is taxed at the same as your investment income, which a lot of Americans uh, don't have the opportunity to have. So is there inherent unfairness uh, that I would pay more taxes based on uh, the work that I do every day? Um, and those who might be the wealthiest uh, pay half that in some instances because of the investment income uh, they get, we clearly think so, and we think those things should uh, should be more equal. So you think you, you think that unlike every other developed country in the world, we should have the same tax rate, or actually a higher tax rate, for investment in risky startup businesses and so forth than we do for ordinary income. I think some of the things you heard Senator Padilla talk about, uh, some of the the inherent issues we had as an economy before. I think that COVID. I think that's a yes or no. Is that I mean you you believe that in fact there should be a higher tax rate on capital gains than yeah, ordinary? We, we, we do. We think okay. it should be taxed okay. close to labor. I, I would note that that I, I think uh, I do. Do you not believe that capital gains tax rates relate to growth? You said that the best way to get out of the deficit we have is high growth. But if we have the highest capital gains tax rates in the world, do you think that? that might depress growth? We think middle class is an avenue to, to growth and this would allow us to put more income or, or resources into infrastructure, into education, uh, rather than allowing the wealthy to uh, pay in some instances half or even less than half of working Americans. Well, it, it, don't forget that, that the, the, the uh, top 10% earners in America are paying 71% of the income tax. Is, is that not their fair share? Is that, I, I, you keep saying they should pay their fair share, they should pay their fair share. What, what is the fair share that should be paid by the top 10% of Americans? If 71% is too low, will you say what share it should be? Uh, Senator Roman, I, I think you have to look at what they're making compared to what they're paying, and I think most Americans uh, would find it objectionable given the percentage they're paying of their income. I think CEOs now make well, close to it's noted 50, more than 53% 53 of Americans pay no income tax at all. So, and, and, and should that number get higher? Should there be a higher percent that pays no income tax at all? We should have to compare that to what they make compared to the top 1% and now, what they're I, making. I, well, you know what the numbers are in terms of the, the top 10% earn 40% of the income and are paying 71% of the taxes. And so should they be paying 80% of the taxes, 85, 90? I think we What's, have to look at what they're paying compared to what they make, what, which is, I know it's hard to believe, but they, what, they are but, not paying but, the same but, percentage as workers. <laughs> uh, well, they're, when you say they're not paying the same percentage as workers, 53% of Americans pay zero, pay no income tax at all. So 53% of Americans are not paying any tax. How is it those top 10% are paying a higher share? I, I mean, so I, I would note that, that uh, it would be helpful to understand exactly where you think we ought to go to reach a, a, a fair share. Let me ask one more thing, and, that, and this is just simple math. I guess my time's almost up, and that is uh, you're proposing that the capital gains uh, tax be applied at death, uh, that the, the, the so-called uh, tax run-up uh, at death uh, uh, 
uh, tax adjustment at death is, is eliminated and that should pay a capital gains tax. Help me with this. If Let's say uh, an individual, uh, uh, a woman died, um, let's say her, her million dollar exemption was being used elsewhere and so she went from, had an asset that she bought for dollars, now worth a million dollars. I just want to do the math here. So she would there, then pay the capital gains tax of 43.4% on that million dollars, as I understand it, which would be $434,000. And then she'd also pay, when I say she, her estate, would also pay an inheritance tax on the million dollars, which would be $400,000. So, so in total, she would pay, her estate would pay $834,000 on a $1 million gain, or some 83%. Does that... That doesn't seem like fair share to me. That seems like confiscatory. Have I missed the math somehow on that? I would say if you look at it in maybe in more round numbers, if I want to leave my a $5 million house to a child, $2.5 million remains tax-free. So there is a $1 million, you point out, exemption uh, for per individual. Yeah, I understand. And so let's, I'm talking about an individual that has multiple assets. But it's saying that, that once that $1 million has been, has been used up, that... Uh, uh, that at that point, the 83% tax rate is a fair share, not confiscatory. I mean, you have to look at the exemption, which is a million dollars. Uh, 